the center of the universe and the Thrive15.com World Headquarters. Let's go! Presenting the world's only business school without the BS with optometrist and entrepreneur Dr. Robert Selner and the Forest Small Business Administration Entrepreneur of the Year in your ear, Clay Clark. It's the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Three, two, one. What is going on, Thrive Nation? Welcome back to your favorite radio show. It's Tulsa's only local business radio show. You see, this is a political year. You've heard your politics. You've got your fill. You you know who you're going to vote for. Maybe you're one of that the rare 5% of the population and 10%. You go, I'm undecided. I'm going to wait work, clear down to the final day of election. I'm going to just sort of just see what happens if you're that kind of person. But either way, you've kind of reached that, that political uh, fatigue and you want to learn how to start or grow a business you want to learn something kind of positive and actionable and so this is your show it's the thrive time show and we're broadcasting here from the dojo of mojo my name is clay clark i'm the former united states small business administration entrepreneur of the year in your ear and as always i am joined with the optometrist trapped in it's really he's, he's an optometrist he's, he's, an, he's an entrepreneur who's trapped inside an optometrist's body and he's gone on to build a, a, a really a very 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 <laughs> successful <laughs> career, <laughs> sir. Tell us how many businesses are you very involved in at this point, or what businesses are you very involved in? Is a very successful. Very well. Ve- I'm very 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 happy to be here. First of all, and yeah. thank you for that very, very nice the, introduction. The variety of answers. Yes, the, you're I know, and yeah. the plethora of varies was just very good. Thanks for varying your pitch there. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I started with my optometry clinic, and yeah. then I went into sleep the sleep business. So I have a sleep center, and uh, and then a DME company which supplies the CPAPs for those. And then I have an auto auction, which I know Ooh. sounds crazy. A horse ranch, horse ranch, and now I'm involved with this crazy online business coaching technology slash school slash website called Thrive15.com, which hopefully, hopefully, will change the world and it will help grow entrepreneurs because that's what that's what this country needs is more small businesses we're not kidding according to forbes 65 percent of all the jobs that were created in the past decade were created by small business owners and that is you if you're listening that's probably you or you work for a small business yeah and 57 percent of you listening out there either want to start a business or you've just started one you need to grow it so we're here for you we're going to bring you practical tips to grow or start that business, and you know what we're gonna, you know what we're gonna mix in there along the Ooh, way. What's that? We're gonna we're gonna mix in there. It's kind of like you know making a making a salsa, you know, or making a nice you know s- dish. All star mix party. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna mix a little fun in there. Yeah. So fun. it's not like boring. It's not like oh, I just like school. Oh, I got. I've heard about school. Now today, real quick, we brought in a guy who's gonna give the listeners a new lease on life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's oh. Mr. Jeff Rent. Mr. Jeff Rent, how are you, sir? I'm great, guys. How are you doing? I am I am doing well. And I, some people are asking, who's Jeff? Let me tell you what. He's a licensed professional counselor. And his resume is, is fairly impressive. And I'm going to tell you, I say fairly. Listen, to this. He, this guy has been studied. You've kind of studied the human mind and how humans interact yep. and how yep. they work with each other for years. That's you actually right. went to Arizona School of Professional Psychology. Yep. You have 52 hours of doctorate study in clinical psychology. That's right. Uh, needless to say, you're also happily you're, you're happily married, I am. which is a case study in and of itself. <laughs> That's saying something, isn't it? To the morning show co-host, is that right? That's Where's right. You? To KXOJ morning show co-host, Katie, wow. Katie Rent. Unbelievable. And so we're talking today about something that you are uniquely qualified to get into, but we all, as listeners, we all are universally, we're, you're, you're uniquely qualified to talk about it, but we all universally need to know more about it. Absolutely. It's the six principles to manning, re, managing relationships at work while still getting the job done. So work with me. You're still going to get the job done, but yet you have to manage those relationships. That's so right. these are the six principles. So principle number one, you want to set the standard, which really is, I'm going to give you a notable quotable to kind of tee it off here. This is from John Maxwell. Who's he? John Maxwell used to be a pastor of a church in San Diego, and he realized, hey, you know what? I want to go into the private sector, into the uh, non-religious sector, and help business leaders as well. He realized that a lot of the biblical principles are universal and can be used to help people in business. He has this notable quote. He says, talent is a gift, but character is a choice. So, Jeff, I'm going to tee up the scenario. 
I'm listening right now. What you're wearing glasses? Z, Z, <laughs> Z's kind of weaving in that subtle promotion. Yeah, here. he's right on it. So here's the deal: if you're it's if, subling, that's subliminal. <laughs> it is subliminal. Is but if you're listening right now and you're at work yep. and you are an entrepreneur or you're a leader and you're trying to set the right standard, yeah, and you just found out that a key employee is leaving you last minute. They're going to leave on Monday. Mm-hmm. It's now Friday. You just found out right now, head before the weekend. You found out they're going to tell you via email is what the coworker told mm, you mm. that they're leaving to, on Monday. You're right now you've got to work all weekend right. to try to. How do you handle those kinds of scenarios? Why is it so important to set the standard? How do you go about doing it, Jeff? Well, you have to understand that if somebody's leaving and they haven't told you and they're leaving this weekend, that there's probably something going on that they haven't told you for a while. They're probably upset. The thing they need to know is that you care. Okay. They're not going to really need to know what you know, and they're not that concerned about your business or they'd be staying. Mm. So what they're doing is they're looking for a way to either survive, to connect, to achieve something that matters to them, or to become a masterful self in their life through working with you. And if you give them those kind of opportunities, you might be able to save it. So let's say that I am beyond mad. Yeah. Okay? Here's the mm. scenario. Furious. Works. Yeah. Furious. My wife calls it Mr. Upset. Furious. Set Sounds like my working day. So here's an example. We have a wedding <laughs> photography company. Yep. And at the weddings, this is how, we, this is how it happens. We, we book a wedding. Yep. And we promise the brides will do a two-week turnaround time. And we're going to do everything for them 30% less than any other competitor. You're listening to The Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. The company's called Epic Photos. So we go out there. Epic. It's very yep. epic. I'll and say. if you Google Epic Photos, we, we've won all the awards, except for in 2013, for some reason, we didn't win all the wedding awards that year. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. <laughs> but we go in there, and we're out there. We're, we're doing these weddings, and we, the, the person, the, the photographer who works in my office yep. knows. They said, Jeff, we promise we will get you the photos. We'll get it to you by Friday. I'm making it up. November the 15th. Right. And on the 15th, rather than mailing it or hand delivering it on the 12th to get it there on time, they just leave it on their desk, and they routinely show they don't care. Right. So now the file's late. Has this situation ever happened? Oh, yes. And so Epic Photography, we like to, I always tell people, we make everyone happy 97% of the time. <laughs> That's pretty good. Because we really don't, we're not perfect, but we pay our people based on their performance. But yeah. the point is, if I'm irritated because the person chose to get the file late, Mm-hmm. What advice do you have? Mitch? Well, the, you have to, first of all, understand that it's not personal. They're not out to just upset you. Mm. They're having a re, there's a reason why they've done that. And generally, if they don't care, it's because they're not connected enough to what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So if it's an empl- if is this your employee that's not getting the file or is it the yeah, customer? Yeah, it's my employee. Okay, so your employee needs to understand, first of all, that there is a level of expectation that needs to happen. And it's okay to expect that so long as you're also providing uh, what they need, which is survival, which is enough money if they're making enough money, or connection, like you know that uh, they know that you care about their life and what their concerns are, so you'll be reasonable and you'll listen. And then you start asking them. Instead of being mad, you ask why it didn't happen, and you try to understand. And if it becomes willfulness or just <laughs> irresponsibility, then you can have a talk with them about they're not going to be here long if they continue with that. You're saying employees want both connection and cash? Yes. Z, talk to me about this. Have you ever met a buddy of yours, a colleague of yours, a guy who, you know, he's struggling in his business, and you hear some of the stories, and it sounds like he's either A, not connecting with the staff or B, not paying the staff. I mean, how often do you see this where people are struggling to find and keep good people because they're just not either paying well, connecting well? I mean, you know, do you see this often? Well, you know, paying well is is pretty easy to remedy. I mean, that's, you know, hey, if you don't pay them well and they're worth it, somebody else will, you know. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it, which, which is so uh, incredible, if you listen, if you if you did not catch yesterday's show, you have to go to thrivetimeshow.com and listen to it. Because what we were talking about was, was talking about bringing positivity to the workplace. Yeah. And part of positivity to the workplace is connecting with your employees right. and it's amazing it is absolutely amazing, amazing how many times amazing how many times um that an employee doesn't feel like they can come up to you and and talk about it and the only recourse they think they have is this is this hail mary of quitting the, the, it's, wanna, it's incredible illuminate us so how, how do we create the right culture where people don't feel that quitting is the only move they have how do we do it well, I tell you what, what you do is you be proactive. Proactive? Proactive. Sounds like work. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. That's why they call it that. That's oh, why they call it that. Thank you. Thank you. Rinse, rinse scores one for the home team. <laughs> but you have to be proactive, and it's through communication, open communication. If you go to work, <laughs> walk by everybody in the hallway with your head down on the cell phone. <laughs> I told you to get, get me three of those, and you walk past them. I swear, Carl. You go to your office, and you shut the door, and you lock it. You know, you sit in there <laughs> all day long, and you're on your... <laughs> And you're in there yeah. working on your, all on they your hear, spreadsheets. All they hear is you in there going, what in the world? Why, why did you get it there sooner? What are you thinking, right. you idiots, you know? And, and you don't connect with them. Right. Then, then they're not going to feel that they have the ability, the ability to approach you and say, hey, hey, boss, can I have a few minutes of your time? Because as a, as a busy, as a, and listen out there, as a busy entrepreneur, oh, come on now. one of the last things you want <laughs> is someone walking up to you and said, hey, Hey man, can I uh, I can I have some of your time? Hey, can we talk? Because right. the time is right. the one thing you can't get more of. Right. And you're sitting there going, I'm trying to conquer the world, mm -hmm. and you want to talk about your feelings on having to work more Saturdays than Billy. Now when we come back. What I'm going to do is I am going to tell you a story about really what I would call it's a dark art. It's a it's a negative. It's a it's a wealth repulsion disease. That I have scientifically named, it goes on. It goes on the periodic table as as an element of wealth repulsion. Z. So if you don't want, if you don't, this is something to do if you don't want money. Yeah, if you don't want money, you do mm. this. What you do is you 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 implement a system that I did for about four my first four <laughs> years of business. I call it jackassery. Now it is from the root word jackass, and I and I have a move here. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through what not to do, because I consistently did what I shouldn't do for a while. Until I almost ended up living in a van down by the river. and then I, I can hardly wait to hear this. I can't either. Yeah. I'm going to stay tuned. I'm going to stay tuned personally. Now, we're listening to Little Timberlake taking you out here as we're listening to the Thrive Time Show. But I'm telling you, when we come back, when we come back, principle number two and the story, the super story of Jack Assery coming up next. Live, local, now. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Hello, Thrive Nation, and welcome back to the Inspiration Station. You're listening, you're listening today here to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. It's like a dojo of mojo. When you're trying to find a place where you're trying to go, I just want to go to a place where I can be safe and I can focus on how to grow a business. I want something positive, place, a safe place. place. Hold me, Z. Hold me. My name is Clay Clark. <laughs> Clay Clark. I'm the former <laughs> Entrepreneur of the Year, and I am here today with a man who's who's put the letter Z all over Tulsa, he's had a very he's had a, a string a string of successful businesses in a row. It's Dr. Robert Zellner, sir. How are you? I was highly influenced by the movie Zorro as a young man, so <laughs> I just I just I always thought that. Then I carried around a big sword there for a while, and marks scratched on buildings, but they frowned on that. <laughs> so so now I I don't do that as much. And we have a very special guest. Very special. He's going to give you a new lease on life, Thrivers. This is Jeff Rent. I want you to remember the name, Jeff rent because he is a guy who, who he knows a little bit about how the human race operates and, and then this just in apparently if you own a business apparently the people who work there are humans what? <laughs> that's true and they're not robots in most cases that's true and so that there you know we have you are a licensed professional counselor yeah and i just want to where can people find out more about you if they want to know more they love what they're hearing today and they go but first off, I guess, what all, what, what all do you do? How, do? how can you help people? Well, I've got a counseling practice, and I do regular counseling for marriage and family and that kind of stuff. I also work with a lot of kids, and then I do a lot of business coaching. Yeah. And then I'm taking what I'm teaching in both my counseling practice and business coaching and making programs out of that. We have a company called Thrive 365 Media, of all mm. things. I oh, didn't wow. even know Look you guys that had that. Thrive. Yeah, how about wow. That? We're all wanting yep. everybody to thrive yep. on the show. That's exactly right. Same, same idea. And you, and I'm just making that available to people who can't come to counseling or don't live in Tulsa. And how, how do they how do they find out more? What's, what's, what's the website? Go to jeffrent.com. How do you spell rent? R-I-N-D-T, jeffrent.com. Okay, okay. And so what we're talking about, is, I, was, I was telling you before the break, that there, I had this story I was going to share about, about Jack Assery. Yeah. Something I used to do that was dumb. Now, Z, back in the day, I started the... the oh, hold on, hold on. So this is... And the Force is what gives the Jedi his power. <laughs> it binds the galaxy hold together. On. It's Jack Assery. It is Jack Assery. It's a wealth-repelling force. And what happened was, is I wanted so much to not be poor that I put my head down 
and I worked very hard in construction. I actually had a job where I worked about 60 hours a week, and I worked, I worked as a home health aide. So I worked from 5 a.m. typically till about 6 or 7 every day doing poured concrete six days a week. And then I worked as a home health aide from 7 p.m. until about midnight. So I was only not 